In this video, I'm going to present Judith Thompson's explanation that she gave in 1990 of how to solve the so-called trolley problem. Just a quick refresher, what's the trolley problem? It's the problem of trying to explain why it's morally permissible to kill one to save five in the notorious trolley case. So this is a case where a runaway trolley or tram or train is heading down a track towards five people. And the only way in which you can save them is by pulling a switch that will divert the trolley down another track on which there is one person. By diverting the tram or trolley, you will kill one person, but you'll thereby save five. And many people think that that's a morally permissible action. Importantly, Thompson wants to explain why this, though, is not a general permission. It's not in general okay to kill one person in order to save five. In fact, this is a pretty rare exception, she thinks. And that seems to be the widely held view. If you come up with your own scenarios of killing one to save five, I suspect you'll find in the vast majority of them you think probably it would be, at least according to the common sense opinion, morally wrong to proceed and kill one to save five. So the challenge for Thompson is to explain in a plausible way why just a few cases like the trolley case are exceptions. What is it that makes them importantly different? So in her book, The Realm of Rights, published in 1990, she offered a very elegant, I think, account of what makes trolley cases different. Regrettably, I should warn you, later on in 2006, she published an article where she confessed she'd changed her mind. She thought that the 1990 story did not work. And in fact, she's now come around, it seems, to the view that it is in fact not permissible to kill, even in the trolley case, that it's a mistake to think that this is an exception to the general rule that prohibits killing. But we might need to leave that for another occasion. For now, I just want to explain what I think is probably the best account ever given of why trolley cases might be cases of permissible killing for a rights-based kind of theorist. So here in short is her solution. I'm going to compare the trolley case to another case of killing one to save five, known as the transplant problem. So this is a case where a surgeon could cut up one person in order to save five patients who need the organs from that one person. If you're unfamiliar with the case, you perhaps should look at some of my other videos where I've discussed it. But here's the, the basic idea. This is why trolley is different, importantly different from a, tra a transplant case or other cases. She says, it's in all of our interests in a special sort of way that people do kill one to save five in trolley cases, but it is not in all of our interests in any similar way that people kill one to save five in transplant cases. So the key, of course, is to get clear on what is this special way we're talking about in which it is in everyone's interests. To get your head around this idea, imagine that all six people who are going to be affected by the trolley problem are track workers. So uh, there's going to be five on one track and one on the other, but they're all workers with a similar job working for the, the trolley company. And early in the morning, they are standing around having their coffee and they haven't yet worked out who is going to be the one who's going to work on his or her own today. And that's going to be determined randomly. They might draw straws or do something like that. And if somebody just it occurred to them, they were, they were thinking about nasty things that might happen that day. They might say, what would we like to happen if a trolley situation arose? If a trolley were bundling down the track towards five of us, and the only way to save five of us were to divert the trolley and run over the remaining one of us. Would it be to my advantage, we might ask, if we later adopted a kill one to save five policy in cases just like that? And Thompson claims early in the morning, before they know where they're working, everyone should say yes. It's in everyone's interests to have that uh, policy be adopted. Here's how you would reason through it. E each and every person can reason this way. Uh, suppose a trolley-like situation arises. Well, I don't know whether I'll be in the group of five or the group of six, but I do know it's random, so there's a five in a six chance I'll be in the group of five. Therefore, if we didn't adopt the kill one to save five policy and we just let the trolley run into the five, then I would have a five in six chance of being killed. On the other hand, if we did adopt the kill one to save five policy, 
The only way I'd be killed is if I was the one track worker working on my own, and that's only a one in six probability of that happening. So I prefer a one in six chance of dying to a five in six chance of dying. It is to my advantage to adopt the kill one to save five policy. Each and every track worker can endorse that argument in the morning, and hence it is indeed in every worker's interests to uh, adopt the kill one to save five policy. Right? So here they all are, standing around having their coffee, and they're pondering what would happen if we don't kill. All six workers would know their chance of dying is five on six. On the other hand, if they do kill later on in a trolley situation, they each know their chance of dying is one on six. So I like to call this, Thompson doesn't use this phrase, but I like to call this a magic moment. Why? Because it's rather special. It's a time when a group of people would unanimously agree to a policy that involves killing, even though that policy might lead to themselves being killed. It's extremely rare for people to ever agree to killing policies. Hopefully they don't even often agree to killing other people, but extremely rare for people to agree to a policy that could lead to themselves being killed. So that's why this is something quite exceptional about a trolley case. And Thompson's theory, in short, is whenever there is such a magic moment, that is enough to justify a later killing in accordance with the policy that they would agree to. Just one quick thing to, to mention here. I've discussed it as though they have an agreement. It's actually not essential to her case that they discuss it. It's just essential that it would be in their interests to adopt this policy. So even without the track workers discussing it, she thinks it's true that it would be in their interest to adopt the policy, and that fact is enough to justify later on killing in accordance with the policy. Now, an important feature to note is that unanimous agreement that is, exists early in the morning, it won't exist uh, all the way through the day if a trolley situation arises. Imagine you turn out to be, just after you've had the discussion, if you did in fact discuss it, uh, and you say, yes, it's in my interest to have this policy, and then the workers draw straws, and one worker draws the short straw and turns out to be working on his or her own, that worker will say, oh, darn it, this policy is not in my interests. Okay. I am now the one and only person who is disadvantaged by the policy. But Thompson says, that doesn't matter. The magic moment existed earlier. That will later on justify killing in accordance with the policy. So here we are later on the day, a trolley situation's arisen. Consider the two options. There's the no-kill policy, well, in that case, five workers would have a guaranteed chance of dying, 100% chance of dying if you don't kill, and one worker has no chance of dying. On the other hand, if you do kill, this one worker, their chances of dying go up to one, and so this worker says, no, I really don't like the killing policy. So no longer is it unanimous. Remember how before all six agreed, this one person clearly would no longer agree if it were up to them. But as I said, Thompson says that doesn't matter. Provided there was an earlier magic moment, it's okay to go ahead. So that's our explanation of what's special about a trolley case. It will give rise, at least in many standard trolley cases, to a magic moment earlier, and that justifies later killing in accordance with it. In part two, I'm going to explain why does that exception not generalize, though, to lots of other cases, such as the famous transplant case.